What's up, sweaties? You're watching Comic Book Shopping. I'm John Schnapp. I'm standing at Earth 2 in Sherman Oaks with Michael Giacchino. What's up, Michael? No, you know, we're here. We're going to look around. We're going to have fun. Have you already seen Incredibles 2? It's mind-boggling. I don't even know how that all happened. So I called Feige and I was like, what are we doing here? He emails me that frame. He goes, this is what we're doing. From that moment on, my life really changed. We're going to talk about your comic book obsession, maybe, <laughs> your musical career yeah. as a composer, and get into comic. Let's do it. And hopefully we'll get some info out of you as well. Maybe. All right. You started scoring video games, like the entire Call of Duty series. How'd you get into scoring video games? You know, it was weird. I was working at Disney, working in their marketing department. The more I was there, I started learning about like, oh wait, this is how the films get made. And one day a job came up for an assistant producer to, for video games. And knowing that the uh, producers were hiring the composers, I thought if I can get a job as a producer, maybe I could hire myself to write music for whatever it is I'm working on. I got that job and that's pretty much what happened. I was able to then start hiring myself to do the music for those games. And the big break was working for Steven Spielberg on the Lost World video game for PlayStation. Right. You know, at that time, video game music was a lot of beep, boop, 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 right. this kind of stuff. So the PlayStation was the first time you were, it gave you the ability to put CD quality audio on the game. And one day, Stephen came in for a meeting, and my music was in that game. They said, Stephen would like to talk to you. And Stephen's like, I love the music you did for the game, but we're going to record it with a, a live orchestra, right? Now, at that time, the, the CEO and the CFO and everyone else, the dreamers, were like, we're not going to pay for a live orchestra. But when those words came out of Stephen's mouth, suddenly everyone was like, yes, of course we're going to do it with a, a live orchestra. And uh, I have to say, from that moment on, my, my, my life really changed. Are comic books uh, an influence for you? And what influences you when you're composing? Well, I mean, look, I love comic books. I love Will Eisner. And that was one of the things that Brad Bird and I connected on when we met to talk about The Incredibles. That was my first movie. So Brad and I started talking. We talked about Johnny Quest. And then we got into Will Eisner. We got into Spirit. We got into all these other things. And before you knew, we were like, we love all the same things. And then I was ended up working on the film. So those were influences to me that I love. I love the, you know, if I look at a Will Eisner comic, literally, you could you could shoot it as it is. They're like the greatest storyboards. Some of the best comics can actually visually make you feel like you're watching a movie Absolutely. in your own head. You know, a Sin City or a Watchmen. Some adaptations that really took the frames right out of the yep. comic as well as the words. And they would be foolish successful. not to. Yeah. Right? To, to try and reinvent what is already perfect, why, why would you even try? So speaking about movies, you scored The Incredibles, you did Doctor Strange, <laughs> yes. you did Spider-Man Homecoming. Are there any other future superhero movies in your future? You know what? I hope so. I tend to, I really like the ones, the films that concentrate on a character. And it's fun to give them themes too. Like I love it when these guys have themes. I mean, we, we grew up with Superman, oh, yeah. right? And John Williams has created like the greatest themes known to speaking, man. Speaking about John Williams, yeah. you had a tough act to follow on Star Wars Rogue uh -huh. One. I think if I had had more time on that film, it would have been a lot harder for me and I would have thought a lot more about it. But when I was hired, I only had four and a half weeks to write the score. And I remember my brother saying to me, he's like, what are, why, are we, why would you even be concerned? You've been writing this in your head since you were 10 years old. You've been wanting to do this, you know? And he's right, because I was obsessed with Star Wars growing up. I had all the action figures. I still have all my original toys. Kenner was the most amazing company, because I remember when I bought a Princess Leia. The Princess Leia came, and there was no gun. So I wrote a letter, dear Kenner, this is, you know, so and so. About, I don't know, four weeks later, five weeks later, a package comes in the mail with a letter that said, we're so sorry. As an apology, please accept this package of guns. And it was literally every weapon from the Star Wars universe in this big, like tons of them. Wow. They, someone just grabbed a handful and shoved them in the thing. At the time, it was like getting the Ark of the Covenant. You know what I mean? Sure. It was just like, my head exploded. Speaking of guns and Rogue One, let's yeah. check out Jen So She's right over they here. They have her here? Yeah. Jen, there you go. I mean, that was the first theme I wrote for, um, for Rogue One was her theme. I was a stormtrooper, actually, in Force Awakens. Did you get to shoot a blaster, or what'd you do? I got to arrest uh, Poe Dameron. In the beginning of the film, when two stormtroopers bring Poe to Kylo, I was the guy on the right. And I throw him down, and they have a little talk, and then he says, frisk him, and I frisk him, which is, 
by the way, impossible to frisk anybody in a stormtrooper outfit because first of all, you can't see anything. Right. So I'm just like, it's like, <laughs> I don't know. I guess he's okay. Let's talk about apes. Even before Star Wars, that was my first obsession as a kid, mm -hmm. Planet of the Apes. And I literally have, you know, sketchbooks where I just, page after page where I would just draw the apes. And in that same sketchbook, you'll find tons of drawings of the Enterprise. You know, I mean, it's crazy to think, like, if you literally just look through that sketchbook of mine from when I was 10, it has everything in it that I'm working on now, which is, it's mind boggling. I don't even know how that all happened, but. It's called a dream come true. I guess so. That's pretty amazing. I guess so, yeah, it is, it is. Have you already seen Incredibles 2? Have you begun thinking about the score I for have, that? I have, I've, I've seen a version of it. It's gonna be really fun. You know, my first response when Brad said, yeah, we're gonna do Incredibles 2, I was like, no, 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 let's not do it. I said, we, the first one was good, it was really good, it worked, we did that. It's the perfect Fantastic Four movie. I said, yeah, what like... if we mess up? What if we? What if it's no good? What if we, you know, I was like with all this fear, like, no, 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 he's like, come on, we gotta do it. If we don't do it, someone else is gonna make it. We can't have that happen. Right. And I was like, ah, oh, okay. I guess you're right. So I was a little uh, intimidated at first, but now I'm really excited actually to jump in. Well, let's get into some comic books. Let's yeah. pick some up. Sounds good. All right, Michael, so let's get into some graphic novels. I know you like graphic novels. I don't know if you've ever read Leica. I have not. I love this. It's And it's about the dog that went up into space in Russia. I would recommend right, that. Well, don't put it away. I'm I'll getting that. Take that. Let's get into some old school madness with oh, Ditko Unleashed. Oh, my God. Now, this comic, just flip through this, man. There's Spider-Man. I wonder there's if they talk about that one panel from Spider-Man. I forget the issue it's from, but I remember I was when I was working on Spider-Man, there was this one scene, you know, where uh, Peter Parker's trapped underneath this giant concrete thing that he slowly started lifting this thing up. Issue 33 of Spider-Man, I believe. There we go. So I was I was watching, I'm like looking at this and I'm like trying to figure out when is the part where we want to hear the theme. So I called Kevin Feige and I was like, what are we doing here? He goes, hold on. He emails me a picture of that frame. He goes, here it is, right yeah. here. This is what we're doing. Look, there you go. Nice. Vulture. Doesn't look like yeah. Michael Keaton. Now, I know you have this, The New Frontier by Darwin Cook. Oh, yeah. But I love to suggest it anyway. I mean, just to flip through it and get all you sweaties to buy it, you should definitely be buying this comic book. You should literally buy anything he does. Yes. Anything he did, uh, it's just incredible. Tom Hardy has been talking about doing it, starring in the adaptation of 100 Bullets. This is an incredible series. Oh, these are great shots. I'm, I call it a shot, like I'm looking at it as if it's a shot from a film. All righty, perfect. What else is good? The return of Matt Wagner's mage character. I saw you eyeballing this Adam yeah. Strange omnibus. Come on, look at that. Well, this, this has like me written all over it. This is like, you know, I don't even know what's inside, but I just look at that and go, that's mine. Z the Zeta Beam, the whisked into the futuristic planet, planet of Ron. Ron. Ran, ran, ran or Ron? Ron? I ran, I ran all the way to the planet, ran. Oh, that's horrible, <laughs> horrible. Um, so, I'm gonna yeah. give you all my next score. <laughs> I know you had, you had oh. to have some of those magazines, right? I know, this is amazing, look at this. Oh my God. I love this. Well, you know what? You can't leave this comic book shop without getting a Shakespeare vinyl bust bank. <laughs> Does it open a door somewhere? If I if I actually activate it, will a door open? Uh, you can activate it and the, the head lifts up. I love this head really opens. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. We got the Shakespeare bust. Let's go to the checkout. Yeah, covered. <laughs> This is a lot of books. Oh my God. The checkout shall commence. All right, your grand total today is? What do we got? Seven dollars and 26 cents. $7.26. Very cheap to shop. Yes, I mean, this food. is real, I told you, this is a great place. It's like, it's like it's 1919 again.
Excellent. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye. All right. You've been watching Comic Book Shopping. I'm John Schnepp with Michael Giacchino. Thank you so much, Michael. Oh, thank you so much. This is going to be amazing. I can't wait to get into all this. Oh, we got some amazing comic books from Earth 2 here at Sherman Oaks. I'll see you next time. Let's get out of here. Yeah, let's go see what doors this opens. Oh, yeah. Okay. Now we are. Yes. Okay. Now we are ready. Now oh we are ready. Goodness. Buttons for everyone. Buttons for everyone. <laughs>